Hello crafty friends, I'm Lean from Studio Gato and I'm so happy to be back with another video using some Hello Bluebird products. I am so excited I finally have some Hello Bluebird stamps and I figured this would be a perfect video to enter the Hello Bluebird summer challenge as well. I'm using an older stamp set by Hello Bluebird and this is called Beach Play. I'm going to use a couple of images from this and I'm going to start with stamping those out onto some Clairefontaine DCP 250 GSM cardstock in extreme black ink. As always, I am going to leave those stamps in my Misty after I'm done stamping because I will stamp these again once I'm done coloring as well. I have sped up the coloring process for this quite a bit, more than usual at least. Um, because this video isn't really about coloring and I'm not that good at it anyway. <laughs> there are many people you should watch before me if you're looking for coloring advice. But what I'm doing is I'm just going from my darkest marker to my lightest for all of these color combinations. Now again, I am just using some alcohol markers for this. That is why I stamped it in alcohol marker friendly ink for the first time. Uh, but for my second time stamping, I will use some First Fine Onyx Black, which is a pigment ink. It dries a lot, <laughs> a lot less quickly, so I can emboss with that. I do love a glossy black outline. You probably know this. I do the same routine throughout all of my videos. Um, but it's always worth it to mention for anyone who's new here. So yeah, I like to color with alcohol markers, but embossing powder and alcohol markers don't mix. You can damage your markers if you go over an embossed outline too many times. So to avoid that, I just stamp it twice. And that is really easy to do with a messy stamping tool or any stamping tool. But yeah. That's why I do this. It seems like it's an unnecessary step, but I promise you it's not. So I just pop it right back into my Misty before cutting it out. <laughs> That's an important detail there. Before cutting it out, you should uh, stamp it again. It lines up perfectly every time if you butt it up in the same corner. And then I can sprinkle on some embossing powder and heat set it. And that's going to give me a really crisp, glossy black outline with that gorgeous alcohol marker coloring. I didn't waste any money on buying the coordinating dies for any of my Hello Bluebird stamps, so I just fussy cut those out and then I can start working on the rest of my card. And I'm going to use one of my new favorite products. Uh, this is the Spellbinders um, Essentials Glimmer Ovals. Uh, and they're great frames for your cards. And I love a good frame because, especially for scene cards, it just narrows down the space you need to fill. And it, I, I always think that a frame scene is a little bit more interesting because you can go slightly outside of the frame and that adds dimension and movement to your card without any added effort. So frames are a great addition to your cards. And if you have a hot foiling machine, these are, well, Spellbinders calls them essential, and I would like to agree. <laughs> I'm using some Spellbinders Glimmer Hot Foil as well in the gold color. And I'm first foiling just a piece of white cardstock. I'm not worried about the placement because I'm just going to cut this oval out. There are matching dies available for these frames, I think. I don't have them, <laughs> but I just trimmed around the edge for the white. Now, my Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine is quite tight for some reason. So for the shims, I replaced the green shim with two pieces of cardstock because otherwise I would get too much pressure and over foiling. Now with just a clear shim and two pieces of cardstock, it foils perfectly every time for me. I'm going to foil one more piece. You won't see this in the final card because I did it again on darker cardstock. But for this one, I wanted that oval to be centered. So I first centered the oval. I created a hinge with some washi tape, carefully folded back in place once the foil is underneath it. And uh, that, that just makes it so it's perfectly centered. It's hard to center a, a die or a hot foil plate when the foil is already in place because you can't really see 
<laughs> that well then. But yeah, I just foil it in the center of the cardstock. Again, in the final card, this is a darker piece of cardstock. <laughs> I did it again. Didn't film that part, but uh, yeah, it's just the same process. Now I cut a really simple mask. I did save the negative of that as well. Uh, because I want to create a beach scene here. This is a summer beach card, so I'm just, um, I wanted to say I'm foiling. I'm not. I'm ink blending here. I've done a lot of foiling over the weekend, <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm just some, doing some ink blending with my trusted mini ink stand or ink stand mini and my Pink Fresh Studio inks. As I said, I saved the negative piece of that mask because I want to also ink blend the sky and I don't want, to that, want that to interrupt that little beach dune. Now this is my favorite color combination for a sunset sky. I'm using some lemon whip, some apricot, some sparkling rose and aquamarine ink. I switch out the blues depending on the temperature of the card. For a cooler look, I always go for aquamarine, but you can go for a slumber for a warmer tone. Now in the end, I did actually layer on an extra bit of blue, some darker blue. This is Seaside, um, because again, I switched it out for some darker cardstock in the end. But when I still thought I was going to use the lighter cardstock, the lighter blue cardstock, I thought the blue that I'd used before for my ink blending was a little bit too light. Uh, now it didn't matter, it's still pretty, but um, if I had ended up using the lighter cardstock, the darker blue on my sky would have been a lot nicer. I propped the scene oval up on some foam tape. I am also using some foam tape for all of the elements here. Um, the animals are added on with one layer of foam tape, whereas the other elements are just some, uh, are two layers of foam tape, sorry. And then I'm adding these little die cuts. I found them in a, I don't know, a random die set that I had laying around. It's from Action, so it's an unnamed die set, which is really annoying. Um, yeah, they had some seaweed pieces in there and some uh, stars, sea stars. There's not, they're not called sea stars in English. What are they called? Let me know. And some shells. I cut the starfish, the starfish. I cut the starfish out of some glimmer cardstock. Everything is foil named now. It's some mirror cardstock, some pink mirror cardstock, and the seashells are gold. I just wanted to add a little cluster of something at the bottom and the top of that oval. And I really like how it turned out. I hope you like it too. I love that little dotted frame from Spellbinders. It's again, one of my favorite new products. I am going to end up using this a lot. And I hope to get the other basic or essentials frames from Spellbinders soon as well. If you're curious about any of the products I used, they will be listed and linked in the description below. Where possible, I have used affiliate links, so if you purchase anything through those links, I will get a small commission from the sale, and that will help me keep the channel going. <laughs> I really appreciate you using those links. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.